Considering New York City, is it on your bucket list to be here and live here for at least a year? Go to NYU, go to Columbia, or are you actually on your way to New York City? Then stick around for this video. We have five areas to alleviate any anxiety or to maybe convince you to live in New York City. How's it going? My name is Charles Botenston. I've been living here since 2007, and I've also been practicing real estate since 2009. So I am very familiar with the neighborhoods and everything that Manhattan and New York City has to offer. So stick around. We have the areas that you probably have considered, but I'll go a little bit more in depth. The first is your career. You're probably coming here for a career, whether that is in stand-up, whether that's in Broadway, that's in Wall Street, that's in entrepreneurship, that's in fashion. We literally, technology, Google has a gigantic building on 8th Avenue near 14th Street and has been literally packed since then. They're probably going to be expanding to bigger and better buildings. Meta has an office here. Amazon has an office here. So if you are considering New York City for your job, it is definitely it, especially if you don't make it in the career that you want. There are so many opportunities to go into, splinter out into another one. If you're in banking, you have a ton of options, whether it's private equity or it's one of the big boys, Bank of America here on 42nd Street and 6th Avenue where my office is. And the one thing I would say is that it draws a very international crowd. So a lot of our clients are from the international space. It's very convenient to fly here from Europe, from South America, and obviously from Asia. So there is a huge amount of allure to come here instead of the West Coast. With that being said, that means that there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of people that are willing to do things that you might not be willing to do. Stay up later, come earlier, make that last sales call, door knock. They might want to go for that that audition. They might take that shift that you don't want to take, whatever the case is. And the reason being is they might not want to go back home. You know, they might have come from something that they're escaping, whether it's a country, a family, an opportunity that they don't want to go to, or they see more opportunity here. They could be on a visa. They could be on a green card where they have to do something, or it could be even a job visa. I had a friend that, unfortunately, in 30 days, he got fired and he had to move back to Canada, Toronto, and he's never been back. He was in a relationship. He was in a lease. He had his whole life here for multiple years and literally overnight he had to leave within 30 days. I haven't seen him since, unfortunately. He's visited, but not permanently. So if you have to come here and you understand that there is a job opportunity for you, you have to understand that you have to work really, really hard. There's a lot, a lot of driven people. There's a lot of type A personalities, people that keep their head down and they just want to work, whether it's real estate or any other sector, Broadway, there is going to be someone that is really, really hardworking where they don't want to go back from where they just came from. Number two is obviously alleviating anything that has to do with getting deliveries. You can, I got injured probably about three years ago when it comes to, I do triathlons and I got injured for a week and everything was delivered, whether it's groceries, whether it's the top restaurants, whether it's water, it's Amazon packages. I didn't even need to leave my house. So it's been a very big second home for people that might have their primary residence outside of New York City. They come here on the weekends, they come here during the weekdays, and then they escape outside the city. And that could be to their bigger house with property and grass and lawn and all that stuff. But everything is at your doorstep. So that is one of the biggest positives is that you can get anything delivered same day, next day, anything. And it's from the top restaurants. They're all on the delivery websites, which is amazing and a huge plus. So that's number two. Number three is no car is needed. So this kind of goes back to number two. But the thing is that a lot of people outside of New York City own a car. I've never owned a car in my life. I have my license, but I have only driven rentals in New York City to get outside of New York City in a rental car. So I've never owned a car. I don't know anyone that owns a car or leases a car unless they are married and they have kids. That said, if you're single, you're probably not going to be having a car in New York City. You're going to have to leave it where you are or sell it. Otherwise, it's too expensive to keep it in New York City. They now have these con congestion taxes. So if you go below 60th Street, you get charged $15. Those things are getting implemented in 2024. So you have to understand that owning a car between the gas and the parking, which is hundreds of dollars per month, along with your insurance, doesn't make sense. Public transportation in New York City is one of the most elite in the world. Obviously, you have newer ones when it comes to Tokyo and you know maybe Shanghai and uh, you know Singapore. But when it comes to the breadth, in other words, how far and extensive it is, you can't beat this. You can take buses to DC, go up north, go to Boston, go out to Long Island. You can take trains anywhere, Amtrak, Metro North, Long Island Railroad, New Jersey Transit. It's all here centrally located. And to be honest, I prefer it. 
I want to be going and arriving out in Montauk or Southampton or Amagansett or upstate New York in a train that I don't have to wait on line at, you know, some toll getting out of the, the Manhattan because it's so busy with the amount of people that are actually doing a, you know, a hot July day and you're sitting in traffic all day getting baked on the sun. You could be on an Amtrak that's air conditioned and you put your shade down and you read a book. So my consideration is dump the car you don't need it and of course other people who have never been outside without a car it's hard for them to leave it number four is the challenge and the growth so i've touched about this a little bit in number one which is you have to understand how open-minded you have to be it is the most amount of cultures in the world squeezed together on a very small island from the east to the west it's only about a mile from this from the tip to the to the top from the bottom to the top from south to the north it's only about eight miles it's not a big island when you're talking about manhattan queens has the most diverse languages out of all the entire world i think it's a hundred and like 30 languages are spoken in queens so you have to come here and be radically open-minded to different cultures different people different languages different religions different ideas different everything and to be honest that's why i honestly love it you know, I'm one of the people that love the diversity of everything, you know, because what does that bring? That brings food, that brings ideas, that brings backgrounds, that brings uh, all these different businesses, you know, in, to be honest, different ways of doing things. And that honestly makes New York City so buzzing at all times. You don't know who's arriving at 3 a.m. and they're going to be here for the next five years. You don't know who's leaving at 4 p.m. and that was the last time they ever you know, are going to be in New York City permanently as in, you know, in their studio. It is an ongoing just turning of people who can't make it in New York City. So you have to be radically growth minded. And that's one of the biggest things that I've told anyone is that you see it on movies, you see it on TV shows, you see it obviously on social media about all these people that are like, I love New York City and they're content creators or the influencers or they, you know, they're, they're an entrepreneur or Gary Vaynerchuk or whatever. To get to that level is really, really difficult because you're competing against, like I just said, somebody that doesn't want to go home. You know, you're competing against someone that doesn't care if they get sleep. You're, you're competing against someone that might have unlimited amounts of money or venture capital or doesn't really matter. So what I was saying is that it's very fast paced. It's a very demanding city and it really pushes you outside the comfort zone and your personal growth and resilience. Resilience is number one. You have to be resilient in the city or else it's going to it's going to kick you out. You know, the the. Frank Sinatra song is 100% true is that if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere because the people that come here are international and are they're up there as the best in their industry, or at least they have a satellite office for their company. And the last thing I want to say is something that nobody's actually talked about is the proximity to nature. Okay. Yes, of course, you have Central Park, you have parks along the west side. You can easily escape here like I do on weekends. I go up the Washington or Washington, the West Side Highway to the Was George Washington Bridge on my bike. I cross over it. In 30 minutes, I'm outside the city. I'm in New Jersey. I'm on 9W going north. And you got some beautiful towns outside of New York City on the west side of the river. And that's easy, accessible by bike. That's way more preferred on bike on the west side of the Hudson than the east side of the Hudson because the east side of the Hudson has the train. It's very crowded. It is very easy to get there by train. Really small, cute towns that you can go to there on weekends. But if you're looking to escape when it comes to nature, just go up 9W on a bike. You can get there by car, easy, park, and then walk and ride and hike. You got Bear Mountain, Piermont. You got some beautiful places that you can easily get outside the city when it comes to, say, the Adirondacks, the Catskills. You could be in... Pennsylvania and some beautiful ski resorts in in, in, uh, in Manhattan, in New York City for, I'm um, sorry, in New York State for ski resorts, ski resorts. You also have incredible beaches on Long Island, in Montauk, in the Hamptons, Amagansett, you know, the amount of nature that is accessible by New York City is not talked about enough. And the last thing I'll say with that is it's all within a hiking distance if you are, if you have the desire to leave New York City. If you have the desire to be open to New York City, most people do not. And then they leave because they're not open to what's going on. And they, you need to be proactive. That is number one. You have to be proactive in meeting people. It's a very lonely city. If you do, if you are not proactive, it's a very lonely city. If you're coming here to work from home and you're not going into the office, it's a very lonely city. If you're coming here for any kind of entertainment when it comes to stand up or you know, over here at Times Square, you're going on a Broadway show. It is very lonely. It's very hard. 
people are out for themselves. So you have to understand that everyone is out for themselves. But if you start to make a name for yourself, then it becomes a very open city. And that's one of the videos that I'm actually going to make is that it's, it's a better city when it comes to community than most people think. And they just think about it's lonely, it's loud, it's crazy, it's dangerous, all these things. I don't see it that way. I've been, again, here since 2007, practicing real estate since 2009. So if you are relocating, we have a really big amount of, uh, or big database of people that have relocated to New York City. We've helped them, neighborhood, price, should you rent, should you buy, should you, whatever you should do. And we have a consultation call with them. It's about 30 minutes long, 15 minutes long. You tell us what you want to do. We'll tell you the best way to do it, whether it's Brooklyn, Queens, or Manhattan. And then with it, within Manhattan, Brooklyn, or Queens, we'll tell you the different styles of the neighborhoods, whether it's high rises, low rises, mom and pops, or it's very commercialized, you know, east side versus west side. There's a lot of differentiation. So shoot us an email. The contact information is in the description. Again, if this is an appeal for your style of video, then subscribe. We come out with a lot of New York City styled content. Have a great day and we will talk to you soon.